The Underlying Structure of Initiation in Hermetics by Franz Baden. Initiation in Hermetics is the most detailed, most clearly described, systematic and reliable course of spiritual instruction ever published. The author described it as the first tarot card, or the first page, in the Book of Thoth. Could there, however, be more to be learned from the structure and contents of the ten steps contained within this wondrous volume? If we read ancient Hermetic texts, we discover that the original force of consciousness, the divine spark from which all emanates, formed four elements, four original forces which are the building blocks of the whole of existence, namely earth, water, air and fire. And these original principles were then shaped by the divine mind into the original thoughts we call the gods. These seven original deities, these divine forces of creativity that underpin all things, created all things. Now it's important to remember that just as the states of matter and physical earth, air, fire and water have resonance with and a symbolic connection with the elemental forces. The seven planets in our solar system associated with these divine beings are symbolically connected but should not be confused with the actual seven divine creative forces from which everything comes. Now if we read further in these Hermetic texts we discover that the, the way of immortality the path of perfection is actually a journey back to the original divine mind. And we do this by first mastering and then traversing the planetary forces and spheres. In this video, I'm going to describe the process by which this takes place. And I want you to deeply contemplate this because a clear idea, both in terms of intellect and emotion, as to how this path works, is like a beautiful magnet that draws you up and allows you to achieve your destiny within this path. Originally, this teaching was only represented in pictures. And because we had teachers and schools, this was all that was needed. 
Before you, you can see a visual representation of the path. With the practitioner in their seat, measuring a globe. The globe represents the earth, and the earth sphere is the first sphere on the path back to the higher. When a student first came under the direction of a teacher, they would be taught and guided so that they would master all material concerns, making sure that their affairs, which were worldly, were in order, their body healthy, their interaction harmonious within the physical universe. They would be taught discipline of the body, awareness of their surroundings and of the forces at work within the material world. This would create a firm foundation for them to move further in the path. The next sphere to be mastered is represented here symbolically and is that of the moon. The moon represents our imagination, our ability to picture things in our mind and to dream and to sense hidden forces. The teacher would make sure that this element of their personality was open and that these abilities related to the sphere of the moon were fully cultivated in a balanced and integrated way. Then they would be ready to move to Mercury and logic, writing, clear thinking and speech would be mastered. This of course would include the controlling of the forces, the ability to imprint your intentions upon those forces which in the previous sphere you came into contact with. Then we would move to the next sphere, that of Venus. Learn to be at one with our emotions, to lovingly connect in each and every action, to master the forces of nature and shamanic skills associated with them. From this point we would move to that radiant sphere of the sun. The sun being the physical representation of the divine on earth. And in this sphere we would learn to receive inspiration, creativity, to listen to the muses, to bring our artistic self to bear, to shine forth our higher self and connect directly Then, stepping beyond this, the practitioner would be taught the mysteries of Mars, of mastery, not just of the self, but of the surroundings, of ambition, of justice, and when needed, of war. They would learn, thus, to bring good actions to bear through their command, but also to be able to right wrongs when needed. Stepping beyond this to the sphere of Jupiter, the Magus would step into their divine authority, learning to command the forces around them and the beings 
which are there to aid them. Starting to bring the goodness from above into material manifestation. And then we move to the sphere of Saturn, this mysterious and distant planet associated with death, where many believe you cannot go while you still have a body. And through the gateway of death, the practitioner would take on a godlike level of consciousness. And then, and only then, as we see above, a canopy of the fixed stars in the zodiac, with the journey start to continue out from the self into the higher realms. Originally, this process would be practiced within a school, and the teacher would be able to see which spheres or qualities need to be enhanced to higher degrees in students through their personal interaction. If we look throughout the different traditions in antiquity, we can see that this idea of a travel through the planets arising on the plains is quite universal. The Pythagoreans saw this as the harmony of the spheres. We even see the Christians take on this idea in their levels of heaven to which you can ascend. And of course, in the modern day, many people are aware of the Jewish Kabbalah, which has the same planets represented upon it. Just like the Hermetic teachings, the Kabbalah contains a story of creation. Before you can see the flaming sword or lightning strike that formed all the Sifroth or spheres, but also the serpent whereby we can travel back up to the original source. But let us contemplate this journey from a hermetic point of view. The first tarot card, the teachings contained within initiation into hermetics, are concerned with the mastery, perfection, and indeed deification of these original forces within you. Before you is a representation of the tree of life with the planetary spheres put in their appropriate positions. Now let us trace the course of training we have within initiation into metics and see if they correspond to the correct positions if we were to follow the serpent's path in the Kabbalah. The first sphere, of course, would correspond to Malkuth, this being the Earth sphere. And within this first step of initiation of Hermetics, we gain a basic level of control, awareness and inner harmony. Through our thought control exercises, we first learn to become aware of our own stream of consciousness. And this awareness is developed to a degree that we can imprint the pattern of our thoughts in our memory. We then move to making sure that we can fully apply ourselves to each and every action and be in the flow of what we're doing in life. This, of course, 
is built on by our concentration exercises whereby we can focus without disturbance on one individual subject or thing. We also learn to clear our mind of all thoughts. We can think of this as being able to create awareness within ourselves but also to be able to create a strong charge in the form of a concentration and clear all influences within our mind in our void exercise. We learn to master our posture. We practice introspection and to learn about our own elemental balance. And through the conscious reception of food and the magical breath, we learn how to imprint our own influences upon external forces. So just as we learn to concentrate to make a strong charge within ourselves, we can create those charges on forces which naturally occur within our life. And with the magic of water, the magic washing, we learn to clear influences energetically, just as in our mind through the void practice we learn to clear thoughts. By cultivating health, a sense of tranquility, contentment and success, we can master the material and move to the next sphere. This of course, following the serpent path, would be Yisod or the sphere corresponding to the moon. Here we master the imagination and by learning to clearly recreate any sense oppression in any of our senses for five minutes we start to build the spiritual body and our ability to condense the mind stuff and form accurate images within the self. Our lunar work continues in the sense that we learn to reprogram our subconscious and bring the deeper forces of the self into harmony as we balance the mirrors of the soul. The training that we started in our first step with the vital force continues and we learn to breathe through every pore and to help manifest our desires through this energy. The next sphere that we should be visiting if we follow the path of the serpent would be Hod, the sphere of Mercury. This, the sphere of magic, is where we learn to control the hidden forces of existence, the elements. We further continue the training of our imagination, forming whole scenes, and learn to breathe the vital force into each part of our body and condition it with such. This allows us to increase our energetic abilities, but also to start building a stronger etheric body through this special training. Once these hidden forces have been mastered and we can imprint upon them, we start to move further. And now we are entering the sphere of Netzach or Venus. At this stage we learn the shamanic practices, transferring our consciousness into objects, into other beings. We learn to link our abilities with the elements and the vital force with rituals and gestures. 
and to breathe the elements into the whole body and into different body parts eventually culminating in a creation of a dynamite a balancing reflection of the forces of nature in their correct order which conditions our spiritual being gives us great protection and increases our abilities in immeasurable imme ways then moving forth from Venus or Netzach we move to Tipperth the sphere of beauty the sphere of the Sun this as you can see on the tree of life is the linking point between the material and the divine and it is no surprise that in initiation into hermetics we find ourselves specializing in communication with the hidden beings and in particular making contact with our holy guardian angel our teacher our link with divinity likewise in this step we learn to shine forth the elements to project them as if like sunlight forming different shapes filling rooms learning to release with force charging external things with these great and powerful forces having made this monumental and great step we can move further into the sphere of Gabura of Mars Thus, we find ourselves really starting to assert our power within existence. With great force, as we come to this level, we are able to develop powers which influence the world around us. learning to create artificial beings which will be able to undertake work for us being able to enter into a state of trance where we can see a deeper and more clearly being able to master the elements from the force which controls them in this step we could imagine ourselves as the commander within reinforcing our weaknesses creating soldiers to bring forth good works and justice then moving majestically upwards we come to Chesed the sphere of Jupiter this is where we develop a greater awareness of ourself and start to manifest our divine abilities developing our spiritual senses so we can clearly see the forces which are hidden to everyone else creating elementaries far more powerful beings 
to bring blessings to the material. Learning to animate pictures and to know ourselves in an entirely different way. Now this is the point in the tree of life where it is traditionally considered impossible to proceed during life. This area here known as the ring past knot or the veil of reality that can only be transversed through death so that we can reach the sphere of Bina. But of course death and rebirth are one and the same for the hermeticist and it's within the step corresponding to Binna that the hermeticist following the Franz Baden path learns mental wandering so they can send their awareness beyond their body forming fluid condensers so that their power can become timeless learning to influence directly through the elements forming a magic mirror a doorway to the beyond mastering the electric and magnetic fluids and thus the deification of the magus begins as stepping beyond Abina, learning to project the spirit with full astral projection, we are enabled to impregnate our astral body with four divine qualities, learning to fully express our magical abilities through various means, through use of the mirror and many other techniques, producing vaults of pure potentiality that manifest through a lightning flash, through all other levels. And then Finally, stepping to the highest sphere, to Ketha, the crown, we learn to have direct contact with divinity itself and to ascend to the highest spheres. And thus our journey a reflection of the first will begin whereby we will be able to travel beyond this earthly sphere and in our spiritual body start to move through the heavens themselves. This is the underlying structure of initiation into Hermetics by Franz Baden. Let's walk this path together, step by step.